right, so if you're on a bird tube scooter, well, then you're in luck. Here I have a setup using the S866 display, front and back light action. Let's go ahead and get into the tutorial. 22 amp brush this controller with the display unit. I'm gonna start off by doing is removing this rubber grip. Now, once you did that, you want to go ahead and remove this, this screw here using a T25. Let's go ahead and get that out the way. The bird two's only got one brake, obviously, it's the back. Let's go ahead and loosen up that back brake. To remove this back brake, what I used is a 316 Allen key. So let's go ahead and loosen that. There you go, just like that. Now we can go back to the top. So now that we're back up top, we just need to grab this and just kind of pull some pressure on it and it'll start sliding off. All right, so now that that's off, now we have access to this and it'll just slide right out. So right here, we're gonna go ahead and disconnect this tab. That'll just pull out. It's just gonna take up space. Now that's out the way, this right here will pull right off. That's what it should look like. This is where your display is gonna sit at. Clean this area down very well with the rag. Just kind of go over it and get any dust. Now for the display unit, I use an Allen key wrench. I don't know the size of it. There's no size on it, but I will leave the kit down below so it's got all sizes there's no worries all right go ahead and remove this top cover here Okay, now with the same wire, now that you have it fed through, you wanna go underneath this, this black handlebar and you'll see it right there. All right. Go ahead and clip this, it's just in the way, it's not needed. Go ahead and reverse the process, put this right back on. Slides perfectly right underneath the handlebar. Just like that. Perfect. I noticed one thing when I put my, my brake lever back on, this little nudge right here is interfering with this on the other side. So let's go ahead and get this out the way. Using a small Phillips head, we're gonna go ahead and get rid of both of these. Okay, so this side doesn't come out. So we're just gonna have to work with that. Okay, so this is the issue that I'm having when I install my brake. You can see right here that I have this big gap of space. So I'm gonna go ahead and chop that off using a cutoff wheel. That way I can have that shut all the way and I can fit the majority of my grip back in place. Now let's go ahead and try this again. Perfect. Now let's go ahead and put our screw in place. Before I do that, let's feed this cable back inside this sleeve. Install this right up here at this top part. Now that's in place, we're gonna go back to our T25 and put our screw back in. Now let's go ahead and install our grip. Here goes our rubber grip. There it is. Let's go ahead and work on our light and our throttle. By the way, this little 
is actually trash. We just replaced it with this display unit. So that's what that looks like right next to it. Okay, so this is our next step, having to get this wire fed down inside this stem. We're gonna leave this back brake undone because in order for us to get this lifted, this brake has got to be undone. If not, it's just gonna be holding it down. So let's go ahead and get on this. Using a flathead, we're gonna go ahead and pop off these tabs. Let's go ahead and insert it anywhere. Pop out, do the same thing on the opposite end. I'm using two Allen keys. I'm using an eight millimeter and a five sixteenths. They're pretty much identical to each other. I'm using one on one side and the other just to kind of hold it as a, a leverage. All right, pull this out. Same thing with the other end. There it is. This is a flathead to open up these little tabs on the sides. Now let's go ahead and break this bolt loose. I'm gonna try to use my impact gun. If it doesn't work, then I'm gonna have to use a hand wrench. So while we're up top, now that I got my bolt out, go ahead and pull this off. And now we're gonna remove these four bolts using a T25. Get your screws, make sure you don't lose them in here. Now that we made it this far, we're gonna go ahead and lift this on up. Now to make things easy, what I'm gonna do is use a coat hanger and I'm gonna poke it along inside until I see it appear out that other end. So let's go ahead and just poke around. There it is. Now let's go ahead and connect our cable to that end and feed it on through. Right here what I use is some Gorilla Tape. Now all I'm doing here is just taping this together that way it doesn't come loose during the process of me feeding it down the stem of the scooter. All right. That's it. Go ahead and undo your tape. Now what we wanna do is feed this down here. Right here, what I like to do is get a flathead, something that fits inside here, and just kind of make way, kind of move it around and kind of compress things that we can have this wire fit inside. Now, we can close this thing up. Right at this point, you wanna make sure that this tab aligns with this slit right here. Just like that. Go ahead and install our front fork. Now the same thing, like with the top, you wanna to install this tab and align it with this slit right here. There it is. Now let's go ahead and install our water cover. All right, now this thing is kind of stiff. And you know, it's kind of been an issue. I had to impact it with my gun to have it kind of vibrate out. So you might have to hit it down with a hammer. Let's go ahead and try that and see if it goes down some. The rest of the way, I'm gonna go ahead and impact it in. Let's go ahead and put our front tire back on. Now you know if your front tire is the right way, if your little air gauge is correct with the one in the back. If it's the other way, then that's backwards. Side, I'm gonna hold on to it. That way the bolt won't free spin and I'm gonna tighten it with this side. That way you guys can see what's going on. Now let's install our tabs. Loosen up these T45 security screws. There's six of them. I don't have a T45, but a T40 works just fine. So now 
let's go ahead and take off the other four right here. One, two, three, four. To remove those, I use a T25. T25 to remove these. The reason I'm undoing this is so I can disconnect the backlight tab. Let's go ahead and disconnect our backlight, our backlight tab. So now that we have our back tabs, as you can see, they're loose. Now this back half of the battery pack will lift up. Now we have to move on to the front and disconnect the throttle and the headlight wires. That way this can fully lift all the way up. So before I can lift this battery pack up, we're gonna disconnect both of these tabs. It's one. And right here is two. Go ahead and remove both of these screws and to do that I use a eight millimeter socket. Same thing with the other end. And after you accomplish that, pull up on this and it'll slide right out of place. Just like that. Disconnect your power tab. Let's flip it around, go to the other side. Same thing using a knife. I go over this epoxy. Disconnect the charging port tab. All right, that's trash. Now let's go ahead and do our bypass. Let's go ahead and get this battery outside of this housing. Let's go ahead and do our battery bypass. You want to move this tab just a bit. That way you can get underneath this, pull up on it. Just like that. So right here, what I'm going to do is my bypass. Right here, you can see it. It says P plus. Right from P plus to right here, the B plus. So we're going to bridge it from here to here. Let's go ahead and do that. There you go. Now let's go ahead and put our top back on and move forward. So I like to put the back side in first with this lip. It goes right underneath this, just like that. And just align your hose. That way you know you're on point. You'll hear a snap. There it is. Let's go ahead and get these open and get the wires that we need and the wires that we're not gonna use. Now go ahead and push out this black deal from the other end. We're gonna keep both of these connectors. The rest of it is trash. This right here is your charging port cable. XT30 connector at the end. This is for your charging port. We're gonna use these, so don't forget to keep these. we need this we're gonna keep this part right here is trash I'm gonna go ahead and get my wires connected starting off with my power tab positive
Now we're gonna work on our motor wires. Color with color. Let's go ahead and strip this down, get to our wires. Right here, we're gonna make our extensions for our headlight and our throttle connection. Color with color, blue with blue, red with red, black with black, and then green with yellow. And let's go ahead and start out with our throttle. Right here, what I'm gonna do is connect my connectors. This is my headlight. This is my throttle. Now we're gonna take our measurement. Up here, we're gonna work on our headlight.
So this red and black wire from my headlight, instead of it being five volts, I actually misread it and it turned out to be 40 volt. So this is actually, both of these are rated 42 volts. I actually thought it said 4.7 volts, but I was wrong. But luckily nothing happened. This resistor, it started smoking and that was it. I quickly disconnected it. But yeah, my headlight still works. Just gotta swap out this resistor and find another way to get this light working. All right, so I did manage to get my headlight to function. I'll show you what I did. As you can tell, the setup's a little bit different. Right here, I have two 30 ohm resistors paired in series. So that brings it up to 60 ohms. If you go down, you see that it's connected to a step down converter, which is 12 volts. This tail light and this headlight are gonna be turning on and off together through this function right here. So let's go ahead and get this figured out. Let's go ahead and wire it up, let's get to it. Now let's go ahead and get these undone now that we have our headlight situation figured out. Since both of these happen to be 42 volt supplies, this is out the questions. I can't use this, it's gonna blow my light out. This right here is a pass, just in case anybody's trying to use this on a bike. It's suitable for an e-bike. What I'm gonna do is clip these wires This input is gonna be wired into this black and white wire, this 42 volt supply. Right here you can see that I wired in my input to this black and red wire going to the controller, which is giving out 42 volts. So that's gonna go into the input. Let's go ahead and heat these up. All right. All right so let's go ahead and power on our battery. Move over to our display unit. This center button powers it on. Long pressing this plus button will turn on your headlight. Check this out. Do it again, it turns off. Now we're gonna work on our tail light. It's gonna power on at the same time with our headlight. Let's go ahead and jump on this, get this wired in, show you guys what I'm talking about. What you're gonna do is connect your tab as you can see, red is with red, black is with black. Some of these are backwards. Now, I don't know what the deal is with that, but on some of them, it'll be red on black. Red going to black and then black going to red. So something to look at. The opposite end, we're gonna clip it. That's on, long press it. It's right now I'm gonna go ahead and connect both my headlight and my tail light together and see what the end results look like. I have both my headlight and my tail light wired in, not all the way, but using these alligator clips just to check my work, make sure everything's good. So let's go ahead and hit this button real quick. Both my tail light and my headlight should turn on together. There you go, you see both headlight and tail light. Long press the top button again. Both turn off together. So now that I know that's legit, I'm gonna go ahead and remove my alligator clips and hardwire everything together. Let's go ahead and do it. These are my headlight wires, green and yellow. In this case, this green wire is gonna be my positive and this is my negative. Most of the time, I always use this as my positive, but down there in the headlight, I kind of got the wire switched up. So this is my positive, this is my negative. Here I have my positive to my headlight and my tail light wired together. Right here I have my negative to my headlight and the negative to my tail light wired right here. On the output of the step down converter, you're gonna wire negative to negative and positive to positive. So let's go ahead and put our negative to negative. I have my negative connected to negative. Now we're gonna put our positive on our positive. Just like before, let's go ahead and cover up our points. That's what it should look like. This is the 12 volt going to my tail light, 12 volt going to my headlight. As you can see, 12 volt, four amps. Input is going to this positive and negative 42 volt plug here. 
Let me go ahead and hit the switch, see what happens. Now let's go ahead and tap our display, check it out. So we'll give it a throttle, check out this wheel spin. Go ahead and put our back cover on. We're done with this back area. Using a T25 for these screws. Have our little back area closed and secure. Now what we can do is put our controller in its housing. As you can see, it needs four and a half inches. We'll open this battery up and remove this little part and see if it fits that way. If it doesn't, then we're gonna have to go to the front and remove this little tab. So let's go ahead and start off by removing this. Now right here, what I'm gonna do is remove these three screws hidden underneath this white putty. Dig a small flathead inside this putty. You'll be able to catch the grooves and break the screw free. Go ahead and pull that out. Come right off. Now this here, take that down and tape. Well, now you have that much more space. I'm just gonna add glue to these wires to kind of just keep them from moving around, doing a lot of rattling. This will kind of keep it in place. Now that I have all my wires glued down, there's not going to be too much movement up top. Now we can go ahead and install our top cover. So we are done up top. I got my cover on. All I have to do is tie up the zip tie. Everything fit perfectly, even along with the zip tie goes right inside. So just be sure to leave a small gap, just like that. If not, you can still, I guess, zip tie it from like out here or something. Now let's go ahead and get back to the bottom. So I went ahead and made my slits. We're gonna knock these out the way. Same thing with this side. And we're gonna knock this back this way. With a hammer, we're just gonna tap this back and it should just fall backwards. Okay, so as you can see, I did manage to knock this little nudge out. However, I took out more than I was intended to. So I'm just gonna go ahead and wrap this up with some tape, make sure I seal it very well. This is what it looks like now that I got rid of the nudge. That was five inches. And from this nudge is four and a half inches. So either way, we're good to go. We have all of our wires fed through. If everything looks good, go ahead and put on your front cover. So to get these four screws in, I use the T25. At this point, all we have to do is get our controller with all of our wiring inside the housing without pinching anything. So let's go ahead and do that. So this part I didn't include, but I added some longer extensions, as you can see. So now we're gonna go ahead and show our housing. We wanna make sure none of these wires go underneath this. So as you can see, all my wires are good. Nothing's going underneath this. Now let's go ahead and get these wires pushed out from the screw and flatten it all the way out. As you can 
see I did manage to get the shut all the way. Now I have my bolts already in. I'm gonna go ahead and drill them in place. The center one doesn't have a bolt. As you can tell, it goes all the way in. If your cable's hanging out the side, you can look down in these holes and you'll be able to see the wires through here. With a flathead, just kind of push them in. This will shut. All right, so you want to be sure that this is all the way in as far as possible. Pull this just to be sure that there's no slack along the inside that got stuck. Open this up and slide it right through. Scooter's finally completed. So let's go ahead and power on our display. We're gonna long press this power button for about three seconds. There you go, your screen appears. Right here you have your mileage per hour. Right here you have your levels of assist. Here's your mileage that you've driven, the odometer battery percentage. We press this once at the bottom. You can do a mileage and track it. Tap it again, your voltage percentage. Tap it again via timer and then it goes back to where it was at. If you long press this negative button for about three seconds, the P assist kicks in, the back wheel spinning, and it's going three miles an hour. I tested that out, and it's pretty accurate. It goes very slow. It's cool to have, I guess. Long press it, and it releases. Let's go to our P settings. Let's keep this at number two. Hit this. It's gonna take us to our metric. So if you wanna change between mileage or kilometers, P03, select battery voltage. Make sure that's at 36. P4 is hibernate mode. So sleep mode pretty much in 10 minutes. This is gonna go to sleep. Number of magnets, 30. This will set it like 80 by default, so fix that. 08, speed limit range. 100 is unlimited. Zero speed start, so if you want to kickstart or not. P10, driven mode selection, only assist mode, only electric mode. So only electric mode. If you're using a bike, then you set that. P12, assist starting power from one through five. It says the starting power of the motor. Bigger value means higher starting power. Set that to five. This type, five magnets, eight magnets, 12 magnets. Leave that at five. P15, low voltage protection setting of controller, 29. That's correct. P17, zero cruise mode disabled, cruise mode enabled, auto cruise mode, or cruise mode. We're not going to mess with that. Go over our speeds. Now let's go ahead and power on our headlight and tail light. Let's long press this button for about three seconds. There you go, you see my headlight. There you go, it's the tail light. Repeat the process and both will turn off together. Long press this button for three seconds. Headlight turned off, tail light turned off. That's it. Power off the scooter, long press this button. That's it.